Hey there. I am going to embellish a couple of uh, pours that I have done here lately. This one particularly is the one I did from the live pour. I want to show you too. I don't know if you can see that, but there's that sheen on those paints. That is from the Oatrol. That's why I do like Oatrol is it has a nice self-leveling, a little bit of a sheen to it, plus the quality of the paints too helps. But um, I'm going to, since this dried, kind of whopper jawed, I'm going to paint in the black and maybe put some color back in the, how, the pumpkin here. But I'm going to add to this with black paint and finish this out. Then I have a UNC cloth that I had done that I still haven't delivered yet. And I've got another one that I'm going to paint similar to this one. So I'm going to show you that. And what I did on that one is I printed out the UNC logo on copy paper and then I taped over it with packing tape, clear pla packing tape, and then cut out the pattern. And so that way it makes like a stiff pattern and you can use it over and over again. I put it down on my clock base and traced it out and I'm just going to do the shading to to make it stand out a little bit more but you still see the pour through it. That's my plan for this one. And I have this one that I'm going to possibly do a silhouette on as well. So but I'm not going to talk during this. I'm going to listen to a podcast that I need to listen to in my mentoring group. I need to get inspired by that. And I'm just going to sit and paint so you can just watch and enjoy. So thanks a bunch.
Hey everybody. I just realized I was going to town on my video and realized that I did not have my mic on. So we're going to start over. I was working on the clock but I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. Here is my Halloween painting that I finished and I do not even have to seal it because the paint and Oetrol that I used uh, has that sheen on it so it was a perfect finish. It was smooth, smooth and slick feeling and I really liked the way this turned out. It was kind of fun to do. There's that. This one was for for someone who had emailed me and told me that she was, you know, kind of nervous about a doctor visit that she was going to. And then she sent me an email a little bit later on and said that she had had to have a lump about the size of an egg removed from her breast. And then she had to wait for the results and everything, but she got a good report. So this is a celebration painting. It's about celebrating her life, Tammy, and it's also about celebrating all of you out there that have uh, struggled with this or know people that struggled with it. I've had a mother that's gone through breast cancer. I lost a friend to breast cancer. So we all have been touched by people. So these are, this is for all the strong women out there who have made it through a, a tough time, through a lot of stress and anguish and that kind of thing. So I wanted to do something in celebration. So I did a Celebrate Life painting and I'm going to ship this to Tammy to remind her um, that I'm always thinking about you, her, people like you. So that's that one and it's got a couple of coats of varnish on it. This was a wave painting and this was a butterfly painting and all I did was I added with a permanent marker the little antenna and just kind of accentuated the eyes but um, I did these in a different video but I varnished them on this video and I put two to three coats of varnish so they're, they've got a nice finish. They're not super slick but they're nice and sealed tight. And I'm hoping those sisters will enjoy their paintings because they don't even know if they're coming. So again I was starting to go over my clock kit and I had done a uh, one of these and then I had someone else request one too. So you can see there's a little color variation because I you know, mix different paint at different times and so there's you know a little variation but it's for Carolina Blue Tar Heels in Chapel Hill, North Carolina and I purchased a clock kit which is Art Minds and then I also purchased usually they'll come with the arms the mechanism, the clock mechanism, which is right back here. And they'll usually have the numbers in it. But I got the one that didn't have the numbers because they usually they're brass or another color. I wanted black, so I bought this for a couple of dollars and it has the black numbers, which is what I used. I glued those down and then I did a couple of coats of varnish. So when I varnished it, it kind of helps seal in the numbers as well. So it's just an extra form to make sure those numbers don't ever come off. So it has a little diagram on the back and I unscrewed everything from the clock mechanism. There's a black washer that I do not use and then there's also this gold washer here. So you can put the gold washer down and so you kind of just look at the diagram. The next thing is this, uh, that does not fit. I didn't take it down far enough. So you take this down to the very bottom. You screw it on. And what happens is you have to have the nail holder piece you have to have it pointing straight up at the 12. So what I do is I hold it and then I take some pliers and I tighten this up as tight as I can get it. 
while I'm holding the back in place. So you need to make sure that that is lined up with your 12 so that when it's hanging you don't have uh, any got something on my pliers here when it's hanging you don't have any issues with the straightness of the number so again I just tighten it with the pliers or you could use a little wrench or whatever you have We've got wrenches, but I never can find them because my husband is not organized. So, I keep pliers around where I can find them if I need them. So I just tighten it nice and tight. Then the next one is the shorter one it goes on and then this one goes on and it has it has in the center of the thing it's kind of like a rectangle in a way it's not a full circle it's a rectangular shape so you have to find that shape on your post and then press it down on the post to the correct area. But I think I didn't, let me pull that back off again. You have to make sure that is firmly in place before you put this on. And then you put this on and you line it up to where it's supposed to be. And then this, this tiny little, the tiny little nut or washer or whatever they're called goes on last. And then the second hand gets pushed into the little hole. It kind of snaps. It should snap. Yeah. Okay. So now they're all on. The hands are on. And then you put a battery in the back. And as soon as you put that battery in, it's going to start ticking. And those hands will start moving and all that. So, and then the other thing is you just kind of check it from your perspective. I don't have that on tight enough. There we go. So you check it like you put all three hands You kind of line them up and you just make sure that they're not bent because they're very fragile. You make sure they're not touching each other or anything like that and then you can move it to the appropriate time. And like I said, put the battery in and you're good to go. So, I don't use the washer. I hold on to them just in case I need it for a further project down the road and I throw this away. But that is the end of this video so I hope you liked it and I will post pictures of all the finished dry pieces with the varnish and everything at the end of this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel thank you